Lesson two, horizontal circles. Imagine that you're in a car turning a corner. What is the direction of your acceleration and what is the direction of the force that acts on you? Well, <clears throat> if you're turning a corner, first of all, what shape are you tracing out? Circle. We'll go simplest case. So if you're moving in a circle, what direction is the acceleration? Inwards or outwards? Yes, yes, no, no. By the way, on your tests, you may have noticed I often give you one of these kind of two-column chart questions. Uh, I always do these by using the check mark, X mark method, going down one whole column at a time. Which way is the net force? Well, force is what times what, Cassidy? If your acceleration is inwards, which way do you think your force is? Because mass is a scalar and the direction for force has got to come from somewhere. It comes from the acceleration. So yes, no, yes, no. And then I pull back and I say, hey, which one has two check marks? The correct answer is A. It says explain your answer using relevant physics principles. I think I just did. I said if you're moving in a circle, net force is inwards and force is mass times acceleration. So it gets its direction from the force. In fact, it's going to detail the explanation so a bit better here. It says this. In Latin, the word, and here's your new word of the day, centripetal, that means towards the center, or center-seeking. So when an object is moving in circular motion, it has centripetal acceleration. Then it says by Newton's second law, actually it's by Newton's first law, there must be an unbalanced force in the same direction as the acceleration. So an object moving in a circle has a centripetal force. Some like to use the following notation. In fact, this is the notation I'm going to use, Shannon. AC is going to stand for inward centripetal acceleration. FC is going to stand for inwards or centripetal force. Where C means centripetal towards the center. Oh, and AC equals V squared over R or 4 pi squared r over t squared. And fc equals mac. Most common sloppy mistake it's so that kids make, because the acceleration equations, especially this one, are so complicated, often, Brandon, I'll see a kid do this. They'll forget the mass because it looks so complicated they forget you need it. Now they won't write that. What they will write though is just 4 pi squared r over t squared forgetting to put an m in front of it. Force, acceleration. Force, acceleration. True statement, force equals force. False statement, don't do that. Okay. Now here's the second key thing that I'm going to try driving home again and again and again and again. In our handy winner minus loser approach, the centripetal force will always be the net force. In other words, Simran, my equation is going to look like this if I'm moving in a circle. And you may remember, Rob, this thing here never actually appeared on the free body diagram. It was the vector sum of all the forces. You will never, you will never, we will never write FC on our free body diagram. What we will ask is, hey, what is the force that's causing it to move in a circle? And then we'll go to our equation. So the centripetal force will always be the net force, the F net, this thing. It will never actually appear on a free body diagram. Instead, it will be the vector sum of all the forces. For example, a classic children's toy. I need to buy another one. I bought two, and both of them haven't worked, so I'm going to go hunting for a good one. You sometimes see them in department stores. They have a toy play plane hanging from the ceiling, and the plane is moving around in a circle like this from the ceiling. We call this a conical pendulum. A pendulum because you have a mass on the end of a string, Tyson. Conical because the shape that it traces out is a cone. See the kind of upside down ice cream cone there? So what path is this plane tracing out? What shape is its path? Justin. 
a circle, a horizontal circle. Um, let's add a direction so that we're going this way. So right now it's coming out of the page towards us. If it's moving in a circle, that means when I add up all the forces, I better end up with something pointing towards the center. But that's not going to appear on my free body diagram necessarily. It may, but we'll see. What are the forces acting on this plane? Now, before I say get the obvious ones, I'm going to talk about two. The first is the propeller. The propeller would be pointing right towards us right now in this picture. But if it's going at a constant speed, what's happened is it's maxed out its speed. The propeller and air resistance are exactly the same because it can't speed up or slow down. So even though Hisham, the propeller, is coming towards me, uh, away from me would be air resistance. We're going to ignore air resistance and the force from the propeller to do a simplified diagram. What are the forces acting on this plane? Get the obvious ones. Gravity. Is this in free fall? No, I heard it. Actually, you're right. Tension this way. In fact, the question says, which of the following is the best force diagram for the plane? This one. Hey, wait a minute, Mr. Duick. I thought you said that my force had to be towards the center. It is. Doesn't look like it. Ah, watch. I'm going to add these two vectors together because they're at angles to each other. Spencer, how do I add two vectors together? So I'm going to draw mg first. <clears throat> and then I'm going to draw tension. And do you see what the resultant is, Spencer? It doesn't appear on my free body diagram, but it's the combination of those two that's pushing towards the center. There's my FC. Oh, and for what it's worth, I think that's theta. Rob, see the Z? So I'm pretty sure that's theta. We're doing a generic one here with no variables, but eventually we'll have numbers. It says, explain why the others are wrong. This can't be right. There can't possibly be an unbalanced force outwards. That's the mythical force that we think exists because we're so used to feeling like we're getting pushed outwards in a car. We said, Ashley, actually, no, you're getting pushed inwards, but your body wants to keep going in a straight line. You have to apply the force inwards with your legs and with your torso. But because our bodies are backwards accelerometers, you think you're getting pushed outwards. Uh -uh. This one is wrong. It's added centripetal force. Actually, Courtney, it doesn't need to be added. It pops up when I add those two together tip to tail. We don't need to put FC on our free body diagram. It'll be there. In a horizontal circle, vertical forces are balanced. F up equals F down. And you should have somewhere an unbalanced force pointing towards the middle. And that unbalanced force is going to be either mv squared over r or m4 pi squared r over t squared. It's going to be ma or ma. Example three, turn the page. So example three says, redraw a force diagram and then write force equations for the toy plane. Note this motion is referred to as a conical pendulum since the plane traces out a cone in space. So we said in terms of our free body diagram, these are our two forces. Right? But so, you know, when I add these together tip to tail, I'll get this. Now, whenever I'm adding two yucky vectors that aren't at right angles together, 
Chris, I always draw the easiest one first. Because I know I can't botch that one. That one I can get right. Then I always, if there was three vectors here, I always draw the toughest one next. In this case, there's only two. But because I know what path this plane is tracing out, then Eric, I know which direction my net force is supposed to be. Which way is my net force supposed to be if I'm moving in a circle, Eric? Toward the... Which way is my net force supposed to be if I'm moving in a circle? Toward the... So, watch. Don't write this down. Eric, I know not to draw tension that big because there's no way that's going to be pointing towards the center. That's going to be pointing up at an angle. And I know not to draw tension that big because that's going to be pointing down at an angle. I can actually tell you I'm going to draw tension exactly right there. And that's going to give me, Eric, when I add those two together, my lovely FC. Oh, and Cassidy, that's theta. I'm pretty sure that's theta, which means I'm pretty sure that's theta. And Rob will say alternate interior. Yes, a lot of that stuff is terribly useful. Which trig function relates those two together? Oh, hey, Mr. Duick, is there a right angle? Yeah. Nice. So which trig function relates those two together? What none of you will be doing this afternoon outside. Yeah. Tan. Well, I don't hit tan. So here's what we're going to write. Equals opposite over adjacent. Now this can really branch into a couple of equations. This can become tan theta equals mv squared over r over mg, or it can become tan theta equals m4 pi squared r over t squared over mg. I plugged in two expressions for circular or centripetal force. MA, MA. Hey, um, how many M's on top in this first fraction here, Alex? How many on the bottom? <gasps> and in fact, because I know you guys kind of suck at fractions, v squared over r over g, that's actually just <coughs> that. Uh, don't believe me? Put the g over 1, then ask how do you divide by a fraction, flip it and multiply, and you'll have to put the g on the bottom. Oh, Alex, but not Alex. How many M's on the top? How many on the bottom? Hey! Usually that'll happen. And in fact, this tidies up into 4 pi squared r over g t squared. Two different expressions for tan of theta. I don't memorize those. It's a... I kind of derive it from this if I need to, if I have to. That's the conical pendulum where you have one force at an angle. Let's actually solve something with numbers. It says example four. The picture below shows a frictionless tabletop in top view. We're looking down at it. The mass is 4.15 kilograms. It's attached to a 2 meter long string and it's moving at 2.5 meters per second. Write the force equations and then solve for string tension. Okay, what are the forces acting on this? Get the obvious ones. Gravity, which way? Since it's a top view, gravity is acting into the page. Yes? Which is going to be tricky to draw. Oh, is the mass sinking into the table? No? Is it flying into the air towards us off the table? So there must be, you know what? I think what I really have is gravity and normal force are canceling each other out. 
That's my vertical forces. Who cares? What are my horizontal forces? Well, Alex, but not Alex or Alex. What path is this shape tracing out? So there has to be a force this way. Which force? And not FC. Not on my free body diagram. What force is causing this to move in a circle? Tension. Is there a force in the opposite direction? No. So no lose time. Just winner. Who's winner? Tension. Equals. Now, we used to write MA. Now it's going to be MAC because we're moving in a circle. By the way, where this gets a bit tricky, Carissa, T for tension and sadly T for period. We need more letters in the alphabet and we don't. Keep track of them and you know what's what when you write things down. Um, I'm going to use either this expression or this expression for acceleration. Did they give me the speed or did they give me the period in the question? Speed? Oh. Tension is going to be mv squared over r. Do I know the mass? Check. Do I know the speed? Check. Do I know the radius of the circle? I think that's the string length, is it not? So, uh, 4.15, 2.5 squared. all over 2. What'd you get? Andrew, what'd you get? 12.97 uh, to 3 sig figs, I think 13.0, yes? Okay. By the way, what if I went twice as fast? What if I doubled the speed? How many times bigger is the tension? Not twice as big. Yeah, four times as big. If I triple the speed, nine times as big. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, how about Newton's, Mr. Duick? Thank you, Alex. Somehow I'm anticipating another question or something like that. Good gosh. Okay. Replace the string and the mass with a car going around a corner. What are the forces acting on the car? Get the obvious ones. Gravity down. What else? Normal force up. What's pushing a car around a corner? What force would I label here for a car turning a corner? That's why it's hard to corner on ice. In fact, you could calculate, since you know the radius of your corner, you could probably calculate how fast you need to put the speed limit at that corner to do it safely. Especially if you know the coefficient of friction of your tires, which let's assume ICBC or the Ministry of Highways does know. That's where the speed signs come from. Oh, and I'm sure they build at a safety margin. Oh! Example five. Let's write force equations for a car rounding a flat corner. So you folks already told me gravity down, normal force up. Nav, what path are we tracing out? What shape? So there has to be a force towards the middle. I'm not going to call it FC. Instead, I'm going to say what force is pushing a car towards the middle? And you guys said friction. In fact, the equation would be this. The normal force is mg. Friction is the centripetal force. Friction is what times what? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as the normal force. What? 
Turns out it's going to end up being mu mg equals either mv squared over r or m4 pi squared r over t squared. We'd be much more interested actually in this one because it has the v. <gasps> Can a truck and a car go around a corner at the same speed? Why? It must cancel. Now, there's other factors. It actually has to do, because trucks are higher off the ground, we're assuming the center of mass is at ground level. This is our simplified physics world. Everything I teach you is wrong. So trucks are tippier, and that, that okay, that plays a role, and load shift and things. But for, if we, simplest case, yeah. That's why we don't have to have separate speed limits for cars and trucks. Only in certain situations. <laughs> So a technical comment on turning. The reason that friction is inwards has to do with how wheels work. When you turn your front wheels to the left, for example, Shannon, the car wants to keep going in a straight line. That, that's Newton's first law. So the wheels, because the car wants to go straight, push against the road in that direction. Now Newton's third law kicks in. Forces come in pairs. The road pushes in that direction, which happens to be towards the center of the circle. That's also why when you skid, what do they tell you to do? Steer in which direction if you start to skid? You steer in the direction of the skid. That's because you want to turn your wheels this way to gain some traction back, and then hopefully you can null it out. But if you skid, you've already proven that friction isn't big enough to help you turn. Turning away from the skid will only increase the force of friction required. You've already proven that the force of friction wasn't big enough already, and now you're asking for more? That's dumb driving. Okay. Example six. And let's put a little part A right here. A blue ball is swung in a horizontal circle and completes a single rotation in 1.2 seconds. The 0.44 meter long cord makes an angle of 35 degrees with the vertical during the ball's motion. What's the centripetal acceleration of the ball? Okay. Is that my computer? And what was that noise about, I wonder? Well, centripetal acceleration is either V squared over R or 4 pi squared r over t squared. I lifted that right from the formula sheet. Which one of these two do you think I'm going to use? Did they give me the speed or the period somewhere in the question? <laughs> period. Okay. I'm going to use this one. For pi Oh. Do I know the radius? Now careful, this is not the radius. The radius is that distance there. Do I know that distance there? And I'm gonna say to you, not yet. Not yet. But I think if I draw this triangle where that's the radius and that's 0.44 and that there is 35 degrees. Come kind of silly. I think I see a trig function that I can pull out of my back pocket that would help me find the radius. Justin, which trig function? Opposite. You're telling me this is adjacent? In fact, one could even say that you sinned when you said tan. You almost signed. Well, okay. Uh, Justin, I'm going to say this then. Sine 35 equals r over 0.44. Redeem yourself, Justin. How would I get the r by itself? No, we're already dividing by. Okay, don't bother redeeming yourself. Dig yourself deeper into that hole. Justin, what's the 0.44 doing to the r? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? So how I move it over? What's the opposite of dividing? Multiplying. Uh, can I do this then, folks? 0.44 sine 35 divide by, and the period is 1.2 squared. Here's my centripetal acceleration. 
those of you that are with me in Math 12, you're probably in radians. Make sure you're in degrees. Because when we're pressing the sign button, it would be a sin to use radians when mean degrees. Mode. Hey, I am in degrees. You get 6.9189 uh, that? How about 6.92? About two thirds of a G. How many of you have been on a playground merry-go-round before? What's your experience with moving in a circle? Do the accelerations get fairly big, fairly fast? Yeah, in fact, you don't have to get that merry-go-round moving very fast before you're having to exert a lot of force out of your arms and feet to keep moving in that circle. In fact, if you don't exert enough force, you'll get. I'm going to say flung off, you'll actually keep going in a straight line and the merry-go-round will move up from underneath you. So 6.92, about three-quarters of a G, probably pretty reasonable. You can get the G-forces up pretty fast. That's, again, why amusement park rides conveniently move in a circle, most of them. It's an easy way to get the thrill ride up and take up very little real estate. The really cool one, by the way, is the Crazy Beach Party at Playland. Have you guys been on that one? The reason it's so, that one is so nice is there's actually two types of circular motion. You're sitting in a circle, and you're on the end of a pendulum that's carving out part of a circle. Very complicated. If you go on that ride and we do our Playland field trip and you analyze it, it it's a very, very complicated set of physics there, but nerdily cool. And there you pull about... I think, if I recall, three and a half G's. Usually second or third last turn before the end. Oh, B. Whoops. Hey, this is part B, Mr. Duke. What's the centripetal velocity of the ball? Now, I threw this on here because this is not on your formula sheet. Here's how I remember this. Brendan, what are the units for velocity? What do you measure velocity in? I think I heard you say distance over time when you said meters per second. Yes? And then I remember to myself, but in a circle, what is the distance once around? And we call it the circumference, and I think it's actually on your formula sheet, depressingly. Is it, Justin, on the back where all the equations, like the quadratic equation and stuff, is the circumference of a circle on there somewhere too? Really? Anyways, it is 2 pi r, yes? And what variable have we been using for once around? The period. So this equation is not on your formula sheet, but hopefully, Eric, I just showed you a way you can remember it. Uh, circular velocity. Well, velocity is meters per second. Distance over time. In a circle, the distance is the circumference over the total time. So it's going to be 2 times pi times 0.4 sine 35, because that's r, divided by... 1.2 circular or centripetal velocity 2 pi 0.44 sine 35 question 1.2 uh, 1.32 Is one point, yeah. Yep. Yep. In fact, we got this equation by plugging this equation into that equation. Yep. I just hesitated to use a found value to find another value. I was, wherever I can, I fall back on what they gave me, right? By the way, 1.32 meters per second, very fast. No? But fairly big acceleration. Okay. Example seven. 
example 7. A 9 times 10 to the negative 3 kilogram ball is attached to a 3.6 times 10 to negative 2 kilogram mass N by a string which passes through a hole in a frictionless surface. The ball travels in a circular path of radius 0.42 meters. What's the speed of the ball? So, huh? Well, here's what we're talking about. We have a large mass hanging underneath a small mass. Hey, kind of like this. Two masses, one mass. And they've threaded it through a hole in a table. I'm going to cheat and just thread it through a hole in a paper clip. Like that. Right now, if this was frictionless, it would go like that. But if I start to spin this, I can eventually spin it fast enough, I think, Oh, I'm wrapping around the paper clip. Am I going to be able to do this, Mr. Dear, with this crude, crude demo? Maybe. If I do this. Let's see. If I spin this fast enough, gradually, instead of going straight down, I think gradually it will actually start to pull this mass up. I can spin it really fast and get it higher. And in fact, I can probably find an equilibrium point. I can find the magic point of equilibrium. I don't think this terribly set up demo is quite going to work. Let me try my bare hands to do it. Frictions are my hands. Let's see. Okay. See the bottom mass raising slowly? Okay. If I go fast, even more. And if I pull the bottom mass down, the small guy speeds up, or if I slow down, bottom mass goes up. Low tech. I'm not going to drill a hole in a table. Sorry. <laughs> what are they asking us to find? Speed. All right. First thing let's do, let's label our forces. What are the forces acting on this ball? Get the obvious ones little mg. Is it sinking into the table? Must be a normal force pointing up. What path is it tracing out? Tension. What about the big mass? What are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. That'll be big mg, since that seems to be the notation that we're using here. Is it in free fall? Tension lifting it up. And this question implies, and I need to retype it so that it specifically says, that this is an equilibrium. In other words, if I look at this guy right here, those two are the same size. Otherwise, it would have to be falling or raising, and the question certainly doesn't mention that it's falling or raising. Let's keep that in our back pocket, Brendan. And let's walk over here. What path is this tracing out? Okay. Tension equals the circular force. Tension equals little m circular acceleration. Tension equals little m. Which circular acceleration will I use? Well, what's the question asking me to find? Oh, let's use the one with speed in it then. So let's not use the 4 pi squared one. Let's, what's the other one? Carissa? Oh, I thought you were saying it. Sorry. I got the m. Huh? V squared. I got the m already. So just uh, v squared over r. Do I know r? Check. Do I know little m? Check. Do I know the tension? <gasps> What's the tension the same as? 
Oh, let's rewrite this equation then one more time. Big M G equals little m V squared over R. And now let's get the V by itself. Justin, what would I do with the R to move it over to this side? And what would I do with a little m to move it over to this side? And then how would I get rid of a squared? So if I hear you, I think you're saying this. Big M, little g times R, divided by little m. I think you're saying 3.6 times 10 to the negative 2, 9.8. That was the radius, 0.42 divided by, what was the little m, 9 times 10 to the negative 3. <coughs> to keep this thing in equilibrium, how fast must this ball be spinning around in a circle? Any slower, and big M will start to drop down. Any faster, big M will start to move up. What do you get? Can you be okay back there? If you need to go get a drink, go ahead. You get 4.06? meters per second because it's a speed. I'm really not convinced that I've done enough examples or situations for you to get comfy with this. I'm going to give you some homework, but I'm going to be fully expecting to take questions on this. Homework, I'm going to say try number one, two, and three, four, and five. Number seven, ooh, cool, amusement park ride, number nine, the Gravitron. Does Playland have a Gravitron? Well, I, I, I think the Playland one isn't part of Playland, I think it's part of the P&E, okay? Because I haven't seen it at Playland since I've been going there for all these years. Spaceship. So 10 and 11. 9, 10, 11. I'm giving you lots, I know. Let's look at a couple of videos.